Welcome back to Liquidity and Forex part two or three. If you haven't watched part one already, go ahead and watch that because that lays the foundation for what you're about to see in part two. So what to expect in part two? I'm gonna be explaining the two types of liquidity runs. I'm gonna explain also how liquidity fits into my trading strategy when I'm bullish and provide an example of running liquidity when bullish. I'm also gonna explain how liquidity fits into my trading strategy when I'm bearish and provide you with an example of running liquidity when I'm bearish. How to trade liquidity? There are two types of liquidity runs you can get involved in. There is the shorter liquidity runs. So this is normally when price moves in the opposite direction it actually wants to go. It just tricks you into thinking price is going up but really and truly is going down. So the part I'm referring to there is the part when it's going up. Just the characteristic of that is that it's a short term. There technically is no follow through basically because price then turns back the other way. Then there's the longer liquidity runs. This is the one I love to get involved in. So this is the real direction where price is really going. Price runs multiple buy stops if you are bullish or multiple sell stops if you are bearish. And these moves tend to take a lot longer to get to its objective or to achieve its objective. You will find yourself, you might be in this for the whole day, you might be in this for a couple of hours. You might have to firm one or two retracements before getting to its destination as well. So these moves are the longer liquidity runs. These are the ones I like to get involved in. I have getting to these short ones from time to time. This is my bread and butter. The longer liquidity runs are my go-tos. So those are the two types of liquidity run. And with those two types, then you have to decide on how you want to play with this longer liquidity run it can still be a short liquidity run it just means that you won't be holding for the multiple multiple buy stops or multiple multiple sell stops you'll be holding for the nearest one and so that would turn this into a short move but at least you're trading in the right direction so how liquidity fits into my trading strategy when i'm bullish here's just a diagram or this is just a screenshot of trading view this is gpusd on a five minute time frame this is a new days of trading a new day of trading this is the previous day this is consolidation. These are days I don't want to trade. These are days I do not like trading. These are days that, like I said, accumulate orders on both sides. That's consolidation. Run back the part one of this to understand the whole consolidation and how liquidity works alongside this. On the next day, we run out the low, the sell stops beneath here. And what do you think is happening at that point? At this point, when price is running out the slow, sell stops are being activated. Breakout sellers, the orders are being activated. People who thought this would hold and they looked to buy for when price got back down here, they would have been stopped out here. So in other words, all kinds of sell stops that have been activated, liquidity has been taken. So that's normally the shorter move, the shorter move. It also ran out Asia lows in here as well. Let's throw that in there too. But this is the shorter move. There's no follow through. It's to trick people into going short. But like I said, smart money normally get in when liquidity is being taken at these highs and lows. So at these lows, this is where smart money are looking to get in. I'm more interested in these kind of moves in these longer moves there's follow through these moves there's buy stops above every single one of these highs consolidation the intraday highs there's going to be buy stops above that too and so i'm more interested in this move here so i'm always looking to catch some kind of move that corroborates with this this move you don't have to hold all the way up here what you could do is once price runs out these highs or it can be whatever high let's say is this high here then you can be looking to take partials and then let the rest ride and that partial position should bring in the money when you take partial profits, remove all kinds of stress that you may be experiencing at that time. And so you, you close off that position and then you don't care about what happens with the rest. Move your stop loss to break even and let the rest ride. And so you don't have to target the very highest point. It could be something to the left that you might be targeting. So an example of running liquidity when bullish. So this is just an example. We're not gonna go into the video walkthroughs yet. That's gonna be in part three. But it's just an example. I post these on Instagram and I'm always trying to run out some kind of liquidity. This trade has nothing to do with the previous screen, by the way. This is an MT4 screenshot of mine. You can see I posted this on Instagram. I can't remember when, I believe it was a couple of days ago. I'm always looking to enter when there's some kind of running out of liquidity. And then if this is where I'm targeting, remember consolidation here, sideways, liquidity on the bottom side taken, and more liquidity taken down here. There's a liquidity on the top side. I'm always looking to hold to the money. And when it gets here, I'm either closing off positions or taking partials. Now with this trade now, once I entered from down here, you have to always be thinking about where are the willing participants who want to continue my buy? And basically all I'm saying is who wants my positions? Who wants to take it from me? So I look on the chart to see where would there be people that want to buy at this point? If I'm buying from this low, 
and I'm buying from here, where are the people that want to buy? The people that want to buy are above this high. So this is why when you get here, you take some kind of partials or close because when price runs liquidity, it can turn around. And so if it can turn around, you want to make sure you've taken something off the trade just in case it does. So here, I wanted to see price drop first before the rise. Patience was needed to see price get to the liquidity area up here. Don't forget 10 to 30 pips above this high, there's always going to be more money. Look, 10 to 30 pips above this high, that's where people like to place their stops. And if partials will close once price gets to the liquidity area or areas. How liquidity fits into my strategy when I'm bearish. Here's an example of Euro USD. I've marked up where those buy stops are. So above all of these highs, this was the intraday high at the time. This was other highs from the previous day. So highs along the way. You can see price runs that liquidity. It runs this liquidity that is the shorter move. So if that's you and you're trading between that time, early London, if you're trading in between that time and you want to try and be involved in that move, then by all means, that's what you want to do. So I don't like trading these moves. There's no follow through. I like to normally hold from there about the high of the day and take it to the low of the day. So I like to be involved in these moves down here. You don't have to take price all the way down here and run out all kinds of lows. You can take it to this low, the intraday low, and let the rest ride. And I know some of you are going to be thinking, oh, but then I've missed out on all of that. You have to be disciplined. Once you're comfortable trading something like this and you get comfortable with that, leave a little piece on and let it ride. If you're constantly worried about not catching the full move, then hold the full position. Then move your stop loss. I'm not a fan of trading stop losses. I'm not a fan of moving the stop loss too early. Don't, don't be doing that. I never recommend that. You do risk being taken out early and then missing the whole move. Bear that in mind too. So I always like to see the rise first before the drop. I forgot to mention this. And for the buy, I like to see the drop first before the buy. Just so you guys know, you guys are going to know this every single time. Say if I'm bearish, the wick will form first and then the rest of the body and then the bottom of the wick. So when price rises higher, that's that wick forming and then you catch that body move. I call it the body action. You get that body action and then you close off for the day. And it doesn't matter what happens, price is going to get to its agenda for the day. Then there's going to be small profit taken at that low, for example. There's going to be small profit taken at that low. That's where that bottom wick is formed. And then you're done for the day. But like I said, you do not have to take the whole move lower. You can run liquidity, even a previous day's low down here. Run that previous day's low and be Gucci. So here's an example of running liquidity when bearish. As you can see, Euro USDs here. I've got my TTTM. So just for those people that don't know what TTTM means, whenever you see me post that, that's trade towards the money. I'm always reminding people to trade towards the money, trade towards the liquidity at every single time. So Euro USD, you can see here, you can't see to the left. I didn't involve that part for whatever reason maybe it was just to get all of this in nice and clean but anyway guys there's always a running of liquidity we had relative equal lows down here we ran higher this is where retail traders would have won their trade because they're relatively equal lows. But they're always going to think when price gets back down here, they get a little rejection. They're going to look to jump in again. And this is when this move will happen. Price will tank to the downside, running out liquidity with that nice good old speed. And so once again, I wanted to see price rise first before the drop. Patience was needed to see price get to the liquidity area. And then once it got to this liquidity area, take partials or close once price gets to the liquidity area. Always remember this. Whenever price is running out some liquidity, that's either going to be an entry or an exit for smart money. Put it that way. So when I enter these cells, you have to think about where are the willing participants who want to continue my sell. And so when you look at this chart, you can see relative equal lows. Beneath these lows, there's going to be people or traders who want to continue my sell in a form of what? Sell stops. But this is why I will hold all the way down here. This is why when price retraces, it wouldn't scare me. I wouldn't be panicking or shaking in my boots. I know there's going to be willing participants down here. Hence why I will hold that position to get down here. I'm always trying to offload my position to somebody else. And if the price absolutely tanks and goes another 100 pips or something like that, of course it's going to be, it's not going to be the best of feelings, but I'm just saying I'm not going to be stressing about it because I've got mine and I'm out the market. So always remember that once you jump in, well, before you jump in, you should know where it is. But once you jump in, just always remind yourself, there's sell stops down here. This must be where it wants to go. We came from here, so there's sell stops down here. We came from here. Hence why this little retracement shouldn't phase you. And hence why, once again, you shouldn't be moving the stop loss into profit early because this is what tends to happen. All right, guys, so that was part two of liquidity and Forex. This is what to expect in part three. I'm going to provide you with a walkthrough trade video of running liquidity. I might do buy side and sell side. Then I'm going to share with you guys how to download this PowerPoint for free so you guys could go ahead and refer back to this whenever you need a refresher. And also, guys, just as a reminder as well, I do have a liquidity playlist so you guys can run that liquidity playlist back. You're going to see more examples of 
liquidity running on that playlist too. Peace.